Golden Black Live. Welcome to the show. Jared Parker joins us. He's an old friend, even though he's really a new friend, but we're glad that he's here. Obviously, Purdue's tight ends coach, but more, not more importantly, but at least this week, more importantly, more. recruiting coordinator. Coordinate. You're going to agree that it is more important. More <laughs> relevant to this yeah. week's yeah, okay. news, I should say. We aren't we're talking not. about tight ends today. We're talking about recruiting. No, we'll <laughs> talk about a tight end that uh, Purdue recruited. But uh, but uh, welcome to the show, Coach, and thank you for – I know this is – you haven't had anything to do all, all the last <laughs> month, and we're just glad to have you here. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, Golden Black Live, if you're new to the show, and uh, you can you can send us your questions. Steve will take them and, and uh, chat them to us through, through, the, through the chat room. There's also an email – uh, spot. If you really want privacy, you can do it that way as well. Uh, well we're going to be talking, obviously, 2014 football signing. I want to say thank you to our sponsors, Hilton Garden Inn, when tomorrow's a big day. Stay at HDI tonight. Basham Reynolds, probably one of the biggest Purdue sports fans you're going to find, John Basham and his, uh, his rental properties uh, that are scattered around West Lafayette. Uh, it's getting near that time for, for uh, folks, uh, for students, especially to be doing renewals or rental. We, we, we thank John so much for his support. And, of course, Triple X on the hill but on the level. Uh, I don't know, Jared, have you been to Triple X for, for breakfast yet? Not oh. breakfast. Okay. Only, only a burger. All right, the burger. So there you go. So he's, he's been here long enough to experience some of that. And, of course, uh, uh, Greg and Carrie Ayer has been great supporters of, uh, of not only Purdue but Golden Black. And, and Coach, uh, again, we talk about it from the, the fact that National Signing Day is kind of like Christmas, and I think Coach Daryl Hazel said that as well. That it's a, it is a special time when you, it's it's a it's a frantic time, but when you get 19 guys to come together and and it all is is done uh, done for this year, uh, it's exciting. It is, it is. It's like I think it's like you said though. You, as soon as you're done, all you start thinking about is the next year. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's that's the, kind of the blessing and the curse. But it's been it's an exciting time to kind of celebrate it and then move forward. Yeah, no question. Is it really like Christmas? Because on Christmas you don't wake up completely stressed out about what's going to happen yeah. in the next couple hours, do you? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, it's it's a little easier on Christmas morning because I think uh, you don't. And, and as of now, being a little older, I don't have to get up at six o'clock. We have to get up there and be in the office at six o'clock to guard the desk and the fax machine. So it's a little different, um, but exciting studio. Yeah, and you look at it. Obviously, it seemed to be not just you know at Purdue, but but around the country, more of a game of hanging on to guys in the last few few the last hours, last last weeks, last days, last hours. Is that more of the case now? Uh, is there more what I call poaching going on, or is that just the way of the world now in football recruiting? Yeah, I don't know if um, it's going on, and I don't know if it's more of the case. I think it's probably just more. It's talked about more between social media and all, everybody's, yeah. there's just more people involved. It's happened, it's always happened. It's just, everybody hears about it more. You know, it's out there. And you, and you look at it and you say, uh, uh, and you're not, maybe not old enough to have, have done this when there wasn't at least some smidgen of sm social media, message boards, uh, Twitter, it's, it's, it's the wild, wild west from time to time out there. It is, it is. I think, you know, like you said, I don't know if, I tried my, my, my best to not look as much at message boards and all those things as you can. Good. But, you know, you try to ignore <laughs> it as much as you can, but at the same time, you want to be aware, too. You yeah. want to know um, what's going on and, and what, what's happening, especially with the kids. And you can tell a lot by getting on a Twitter page. Yeah. You know, you can figure out and say, oh, no, or everything's okay type of stuff. So yeah. it's different. Yeah. We all have our different opinions. What's your take on the early signing uh, period debate? Yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, you asked my opinion, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think Coach Hazel was asked the question on yeah. signing day. Um, but my opinion, I, I think I think it would be there's a lot of positives for it. I think that it's still – you're not going to el eliminate all problems. I think there'll still be stuff that will happen. You're still going to get poached. There's still going to be issues. But I think it does, as Coach Hazel said, I like it from the standpoint, at least you'll know where you stand going into the dead mm -hmm. period yeah. of Christmas. And then when you go out, you'll be able to save some money on who you're chasing. Mm -hmm and then get a better plan together for the moment when you hit January to know what you're doing. I think it'll just be a, another period of re-recruiting and starting over, so to speak, as opposed to not knowing where you stand, wasting a lot of money to send four or five coaches to a kid and then losing money, you know, and all those things. So I think it would at least give you a better standing of where you're going to be in February and then go from there, is my opinion. You know? So I think there's a lot of positives of it. Did you guys, the way that you did it this year, obviously having the big weekends in December and coming back also in January, and this is a very uh, cursory analysis. Is that a, is is it almost that way too, where you 
you had, you know, your heaviest recruiting. I mean, these are guys you obviously worked on up to that point, but waiting to that point and being able to try to close them at that level, is that, is that do you think, going to be more of the strategy down the road for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think so, especially as we get a chance to sit down. The thing that we, and Coach Hazel, again, is something he said, when we get our guys to campus, it, we, we have really good success rate. We've just got to get them here. But you also got to pick your battles and when you get them here. We, we also had a successful weekend that first big weekend, I think, because it's, it's awesome when you get a bunch of families together and a bunch of kids together all at the same time. It creates more excitement. So when you have weekends of two to three kids, you have to have those. But it's also, you know, it's not as, as a big a production. Really, the production is the fun part of it. So I think moving forward, we'll try to get as many kids as we can to fit our needs, but you also want to line them up to where you have five, six, or, you know, that big weekend was 15, 16 kids. Yeah. Made, it, made it fun, you know. 19 guys on the list. I know you have some questions out there. Do not be shy. So uh, by all means, if you have anything that you want to ask the coach, uh, uh, let us know because uh, uh, it is a dynamic class. One of the interesting uh, things to come out of it, obviously, 18 captains and, and uh, leadership a big part. You can just tell by looking at a guy like Daryl Hazel, this is, this is uh, something that uh, he deems is extremely important to kind of rebuild this program. Uh, talk about that and, and, the, and the quality guys that you got in. Sure. You, I mean, you, you look at it every, every year, and then obviously with this class when we all got in here together, because, you know, last year I wasn't even here by the yeah. time they announced yeah. the class and to kind of start the building process of what we're trying to do. And I think that's the big push, especially as you get through the season, to fix, okay, we, we're, we're missing some leadership in areas. Let's fix our leadership things. Let's find guys who love football and bring them in here and, and continue to change culture. And that, that was a big push. I think mean, obviously Coach Hayes was excited about that. That's the kind of people he wants. Um, we went out and tried to find that. And I think we did for the most part with 18 of them being captains and, and guys that have been leaders in some capacity. You know. Yeah. You start this process now so early. When you're a new staff coming in and it's January 1st, and you haven't coached your guys yet, how do you? How long does it take you to figure out exactly what you need? Great question. I, I think that, I mean, it is, I mean, we'd be lying. It is, it is difficult. It is to come in late, try to, you know, fill in the pieces, and then now you haven't, you don't even really know what hand you've been dealt yet. So you get to the end of, you know, the beginning of, of April when you play the spring game, you're starting to go out for spring, for spring recruiting, and when you do that, you, you, you're still trying to get a handle on what you have. So, by the time, and as you know, you've got a great handle on it. When you get to April and May, there's a lot of things. There's already decisions being made mm -hmm. or a lot of offers already been put out there. And for us, it was a matter of finding our needs and getting out there and still trying to get everybody to their areas to learn because a lot of guys hadn't hit an area. You know, like Coach Sherman, we put him in an area where he's been a lot of times. There's a lot of success there. You know, some guys, are, we try to put them in where they've had success, but at the same time, being in a Big Ten school, you got to go to areas two of your strengths, and that's the Midwest. So you. You're constantly gathering stuff and getting together, which does put you behind a little bit. But now we feel like we got a good handle on it. And now we got to go. You know, we got a question uh, from. Uh, I know it's not not. Uh, he used the name Brian Newbert. N double O. That must be Brian's best friend. <laughs> Any preferred walk-ons? You, you know, you, you look at for the for the class of 2014, and you maybe that's maybe a little premature at this point, but. Uh, how do you how do you work that in terms of preferred walk-ons? You guys that just may not get a scholarship. That's part of the process as well. And does that start after signing day, where guys don't get picked up, so to speak, or is it or is it uh, an ongoing process? Not to dodge the question, but it's a little bit of both. It really is. It's you know, and then there's there's a lot you don't know until you get past it and get through signing day. And that's when we'll, we'll we will have a huge meeting at the end of next week to uh, watch a number of walk-on candidates and guys we want to get in here because that's a big piece of your program because yeah. a lot of, you know you hope that 25% of those kids end up on scholarship you know if you do it the right way and get guys into your program that you know end up getting there and you, you get some kids in here that end up being great players for you we recruit them the same way it just happens a little bit later to fill this class and then we move forward and start watch we watch film on them the same way we watch a kid that we think we're going to you know possibly offer what about spring recruiting for scholarships? I know that's not as, as common in football as it is in, in some other sports, but if you've got some available scholarships, is that a pretty, um, a pretty common thing now where almost every year if, you, if you've got available scholarships, you'll go out and look? Yeah, I think so. I, you know, I don't know how common it is. I think it's, you know, what do we end up with? Is there attrition? All those things that go into it by the time you get to May. And, and then getting through another year of spring practice, hey, you know, Maybe we do need to go out and take a, take a look when we go out for spring recruiting to be able to add to it. You're you're obviously always happy to have a couple spots there in case there's a need or something falls in your lap. You know, 
You know, and obviously it's not, not only at Purdue, but there's we, we talked a little bit about the decommitments. How and how tough is it just from from a standpoint when you work on a kid for a long time, and it changes in the last minute? What I mean, it, you've invested whether it be you or any one of the other staff members to invest a lot of time. Uh, how do you deal with that in in amidst all the all the other frantic things that go on for National sure. Signing Day? Well, I mean, the politically correct answer is, is you know, you move on and go. Yeah. Um, we're happy about our class. We want to yeah. make sure we know that, and everybody knows that. But just to talk about the decommitment in itself, certainly, personally, it hits you a little bit. You, there's a vested interest. My wife knows all the kids I call and recruit, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, you want to get them involved in your family. So the one negative that is is if you do such a great job to get a kid and then, then you get a decommitment, you know, it, it stuns you a little bit and affects you a little bit. And, you hate that it happens, but you also know it's the deal, and you just move on to the next one, and we keep moving. You know, just kind of, just kind of going back to the process involved. Obviously, we talked about before. You guys weren't; your whole staff wasn't even in place this time a year ago. How far ahead are you now relative to how far even behind you might have been a year ago at this time, just because of the sheer practicality sure. of being a new staff coming in? Sure. I mean, we're we're certainly ahead. I mean, it's not even close, really. Um, we're out in front, and, and obviously have already dealt dealt with the next year's class um, pretty tightly, and we've got a we're already much more ahead from where we're going to be starting next week too. You know, so we're ahead, and we got to continue to get there because, you know, I think the the one goal in us and recruiting office and what we do is, is constantly pushing. I'm kidding with our secretary and our recruiting people back there. Is, is it's a personnel driven game, and we have to continue to push, push, push because. Everybody's thinking of a new way to recruit, find a new way to get to them, find a new way to create excitement, and we've got to think that way. So do we think we're ahead? No, but we're certainly further ahead than we were this time last year. Maybe caught up is a better way to put it. There you go. Yeah, well, I feel, I do feel, because I wouldn't say panic, but you certainly don't feel sitting there comfortable when you came in the way we did. And now you at least feel caught up, and now it's a game where you've got a fair shot and we got to get on the right guys and go. Yeah, and you get, and it, and it's and, and it's always as you said, it's in play. I mean, you, you, you there's no there's no stopping from that standpoint. Another question about just how, how any idea about the size of 2015. I mean, it's it's extremely early, but are you, are you looking bigger, smaller? Do you have do you have any? And I don't I should know, but I don't know how many seniors really pretty really has going into going into the to 14. I it up either. So yeah. coach, tell us. I, mean, <laughs> I know you're a young team. We're yeah, a young we team. are. We, you know, and I think the, the number is roughly 15 or 16. Um, not to talk exact, but it's right in there. So again, though, where does that number go from here to there? Yeah. There's mm -hmm. no way of, of knowing. We'll be able to sign a good class. You yeah. know, we're not going to take 10 kids. I know yeah. that. So we will recruit as if we have the full 25. We'll see where that number goes. We'll recruit the full deal and obviously put a number in all the exacts on it here over the next month as we really look at it and break it down. But we've got a good idea where we're at. You've been to several stops in college football. Uh, the term recruiting rankings always comes up. And, and uh, you know, Purdue was in different different <coughs> spots by all three rivals. I think at least as of yesterday, Pat Purdue in the 70s and Scout was in this, the same level. What does that mean? How, how do you how do you compartmentalize that, or do you worry about that at all? Does that come into any play? Do the kids talk about it much when they're when they're a part of it? Um, you know what? I don't. You certainly don't hear about them that much. Talk about it. Is it? Um, it's. I don't lose any sleep over it. Uh, to this point. We haven't been you know, on our staff. So I'm going to do. I know Coach Hazel doesn't. We just want to make sure we find the right fit for Purdue, and they've obviously got to be good football players too. We're not denying that. Um, do do those numbers and stats and everything matter? It's like Coach Hazel addressed. How does a kid get that star? Um, that's the, it's hard to tell. Yeah. But um, at the same time, they don't miss on all of them either. Yeah. You know, what I mean, a five star usually is a pretty good player. Does that mean that five star is going to become a great player in college? Obviously, we know that answer. So I don't think we play a whole lot into it. But we we certainly, you know, it's just like Coach Hazel said. There's over ten thousand kids that'll play senior football next year in high school. We certainly want to make sure we try to get the best, you know, the top of that. And we don't want the bottom of the 10,000. Yeah. We want as close to the top as we can get. So we're on the hunt to find them. And, and as Coach Hazel said, we're going to recruit with our eyes, not with our ears, and pay attention to all the stars. We just want to make sure what we see on video represents Big Ten players for Purdue University and, and try to get them. Is it, too, is it too early to know yet what your biggest needs are for 2015? Have you guys talked about that yet? Um, I don't think we've really went into total detail yet. Um, but I can tell you right now, there'll still be a, a tremendous focus to continue to recruit big guys, um, to get Big Ten big, and you're always looking for guys that can change the game with the ball in their hand and or 
on the other side of to be able to change the game in the back end as well and up front. So, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a hunt to get there, you know. When you guys first sat down as a staff at this time a year ago um, to start recruiting last year's class, were there any kind of any kind of common denominators that you guys talked about in terms of we want to find this characteristic in this guy or um, we want to play this style so we need this in a player? Yeah, I don't know. You know, we, we sat down. Obviously, you have, you know, there, the four things – that, that kind of locates you as far as offensive defense core. You're looking for offensive defense coordinators, anything impact the special teams will have. Mm -hmm. Your head coach and those guys all pair up to find out what you want. But I think the big common denominator was Coach Hazel and us down want to have guys who were unselfish, guys who loved football, you know, who loved to play the game. They were tough and they wanted to flourish in the classroom. I think those are the, the key components to what Coach Hazel wants to bring here. And then after that, we got to fit our position, no question. We can't put a kid who weighs 180 pounds up front on the D-line. Um, you got to have variables of, of dimensions that each of the coordinators are looking for, and we match those. But the four things we're trying to match are those four things to, to get it there. Got to be a good player, and do they match those four things, then we can go from there. Did that change at all um, from before you coached your first season to after you coached your first season? Did you come out of this year at all saying, well, here's what we learned about our personnel, here's where we need to go with things from here? I think so. I mean, I think every year when you when you look at it, you're, you know, from an offense and defensive perspective. Obviously, I don't get paid to do those two things, but um, when you look at it, I think you start seeing where we're at on both sides of the ball to see what do we need to do a little bit better and what can we find to help us do those things better. So that certainly changes your direction as you go. You know. Yeah. Uh, a question from Dave on, and 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 I think Purdue sometimes even going back to the days of Joe Tiller, you had those situations where you're doing. Getting, when guys when guys decide to make a late change, or decommit, move on to something else, do you feel like they're you're doing the you're doing the scouting for somebody else, or is there more more to it than that? I mean, is it just a simple uh, kid changes his mind, gets an offer someplace, or are you are they saying, boy, Purdue looks likes this guy, he must be something? Yeah, I'm sure it happens. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. Sometimes we uh, sometimes the leg work hits, and that's everybody in the country. Yeah. you know. Um, you do the leg work on a kid, and then and somebody else comes along and gets him and hadn't even put him up that much time yeah. into it. But that's the business, you know. That's the business, and um, we get that. I don't think we've done any. We don't. Good thing is I don't think anybody here on our staff looks over their shoulder and wonders what do we. I think everybody has a direction we're going. We make decisions, and Coach Hazel's taught me that. We make mm -hmm. our decisions, don't really worry about it, and move forward. So, but I'm sure it happens. You know. Mm -hmm. Sure. How do you balance between the importance of being the first, second, or third offer, or the first major conference offer? And doing your due diligence on, you know, evaluating. I'm sorry to ask that again. Let Just me, how do you balance? How do you balance the urgency to offer a kid early so that they know you really want them, and doing your due diligence on, you know, making yeah. sure they're what you want. True. I, good question. I, I think it's that's that's the balance right there. You know, because believe it, I mean, you believe it on. You see guys right now that that have major college offers and have a lot of stars. You turn film on you start looking for it and it's not there, you know. And what do you got to do to stay in the game with the kid before you've made a decision? Those things, that's a tough balance because I think to a kid it's like anything, money talks. Um, and sales is sales no matter if we're doing it without money or not. You know, obviously we're in the selling of people in a university. And I think those kids still want to hear they have an offer. When they start hearing an offer, I think that obviously ups the level of how serious you are. Um, but do you just throw one out there just to get involved before you've done your homework and then you're cursed the other side. So it's a not dodging the question, but it's it's right there in the middle. If there's a spectrum, it's right in the middle of it. And how quickly and, and how well you can balance the two probably depends on how well you're going to recruit a class, too. So it's tough. All right. We have fired probably more questions at a coach in, a, in an 18-minute period than we ever have in the history of this show. We don't even have any water for them or anything for a break. But we're going to take a two-minute break come back and we're going to talk about some individuals as well and we still have some questions we haven't gotten to uh we'll let them come up for air so to speak so brian newbert jared jared parker and myself will be back in two minutes on golden black live
Purdue students find your home away from home with Basham Rentals. Trusted for three generations to provide quality student housing. We are now leasing for next year, so call us to learn about our apartments and townhomes, all located at the edge of campus. We're eager to share information on our many units, supported by 24-hour maintenance. Basham Rentals. Call us at 743-8367 or look for us online at mybashamrentals.com or boilerapartments.com. Going to the Purdue game? Stay at Hilton Garden Inn, West Lafayette at the Wabash Landing. Your family will love the well-appointed guest rooms, the pool, Whirlpool, Fitness Center, the breakfast buffet, and the amazing Hilton Garden Inn staff. Located just four blocks from Purdue University, Hilton Garden Inn has long been the choice for Purdue fans. Call today for a reservation and make Hilton Garden Inn your number one choice. Good driver? We've got a discount for that and a lot more. See State Farm Agent Trent Johnson to make sure you get all the discounts you deserve on your car insurance. Saving you money? It's just part of being there. Call or visit Trent today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. More than the players on the field. More than coaches on the sidelines more than the fans in the stands more than just scores at the end of the night it's the action the stories the heroes it's the friday night frenzy it's the friday night frenzy and it's only on news 18 high school football from where you live Segment two, Golden Black Live. I want to thank Matt Rector for bringing Jared Parker up here. He is, uh, this is Matt's time to visit us, it seems like, three or four times over the next uh, couple of months, and we appreciate that very much. Coach, you know, you look at, uh, um, we were talking to individuals, and, and uh, one person I had the opportunity to meet this morning, which was, which was great, uh, uh, Jalen Robinson. We did a photo shoot for the cover of our recruiting issue, and, uh, you know, and I'm, I maybe I, I, I'm easily – Wooed to some extent. Oh, we w got the old five is your favorite, right? There you go, right in the <laughs> water. That's perfect. <laughs> right. And um, what a first class guy, for one thing. I mean, he's just a very, very impressive person. I'm going to do that to them tonight on the news. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, that was Ross Bolin, by the way, coming in. He could have done it. He could have done a little, little sing, song and dance. Coming. Watching, Alan. There you go. Um, first class guy, and, 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 and you, we talk about the linebackers and, and filling needs. And those two guys, Juwan Bentley and, of course, uh, Jalen Robinson are, are guys that, on paper, should they get a chance to play early. Sure. I mean, I, you know, I, there's, there's no harm in, in talking about their impact. We're very excited about both those guys. And um, we were talking, obviously, before the show, I mean, Jalen is, is a top individual who knows yeah. how to handle himself on and off but also knows how to flip the switch and throw the helmet on and play the game the way it's supposed to be played. So the whole staff's excited about him as well as Juwan. You know, Juwan's the same way. It comes from a, you know, from a great program up in Maryland, the Matha Catholic, and I recruited that area a little bit when I was at previous stop and what a great facilities they have and how their coach is the way they're going to get coached here. And uh, it's exciting to get both of them here. You know, part of making that fit and being able to make a, I don't want to say a snap judgment, but you've got to be able to make a relatively quick judgment of whether a guy's a fit. How much is that is, you know, you go to a place like DeMatha Catholic or you go to places where you, you may know the coach and you can trust. Do you have to put the trust in what that, what that guy says and, 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 and combine that with what you see and, and hear? Sure. I think that you, you're really looking for the perfect. The perfect storm is, is the coach says it, you trust the coach, and then you go meet the kid or see the kid play or practice and you get to know him, and it matches everything they say. When you have those two, you know you've got a guy, you know. And then if the, the I guess the trifecta is if the kid's at a big-time program that knows how to play football and has won multiple championships and gets coached the right way, you've got a kid that could come in here and be ready to go and is not going to be shocked by the whole experience of college football, you know. Yeah, no question. Well, what was Robinson's personality like when you were recruiting him? Because I don't think I've ever covered a kid – who can go from you know a smile that you know kind of lights up a room, not to sound too flowery here, to 
that look on his face where it looks like he will snap your neck if you look at him funny. Right. I, I, yeah, I think the whole time Not to be too you graphic. didn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, you see, you just you all you see is the part of the, the smile that lights up the room and, and recruit the kid during the recruiting process. You have to go out and evaluate him, see him play, and do all those things to see mm -hmm. the other side. Yeah. And you know, Coach Freeman, our, our linebackers coach, obviously went and saw that during a wrestling match, and that's it was, it was what he bragged on. He loved seeing that that side of him, you know, as well. Yeah, so I, he was state champion last year, runner up the year before, 220 pound <coughs> weight class, and uh, but you know what? Like you said, that switch with him is interesting because it couldn't be nicer. He gave us, as I said, an actual tour of the school and told us what photos that uh, Tom Campbell was <laughs> supposed to shoot, which I was very impressed. It just a very, very impressive guy, and obviously. Uh, it's interesting, though, when you have a, a legacy like that. I know that his dad was a, was a great basketball player, but how much of a factor is that within with a kid like him? Uh, it, it obviously gets Purdue on the radar, and he's, he's in this, from the state of Indiana, but uh, he appears to me not to be too concerned. Uh, he looks at it as a positive, that, he, that yeah. is, who his brother is and who his dad is. Sure. I, great great call. When we talk, again, we talked about it. I don't think that, that that bothers him at all. I think there's some – you know how some families are in the makeups of – an older brother that's a good player and a younger brother and a father, son, all those things. I don't I don't think that bothers him in the least. I think he celebrates it. I think he's proud of his dad, proud of his brother. He's that type of guy. And it and, and I think he's got also I think that takes some confidence to know, you know what, I'm pretty good too. And he never played basketball. I didn't know that he said he never played he didn't even play doesn't uh, have a bitty basketball, basketball body type. No, he sure doesn't. No. And he he's got he, the exact <laughs> opposite body of his brother Glenn. I mean they are completely different yeah. body types. It's he's, kinda like Ronnie and Tyrone Johnson where they're brothers but they're completely different body types. Body types. He, I guess he said he's not, not all that enamored with wrestling. He says he does it for training, but say he didn't start wrestling till seventh grade, but uh, he's pretty good at it. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, you may see, you, may, you won't see him wrestling at Purdue, but uh, uh, you may see him, he talked a little bit about wanting to potentially do some uh, uh, some field work in the world in the world of track and field, and he's uh, one of the best, uh, uh, I think a shot putter in, in the state of Indiana, maybe may the favorite, fa is he a thrower? Yeah, thrower. thrower. But he's, his chance to win the state championship there, so a very impressive guy. Other, you know, obviously you had a, in your class too uh, the opportunity to talk about individuals and other guys who who are some of the guys that, that stand out to you that you were they were you were involved with but also guys that might be might be sleepers or guys that might uh, be able to make a big impact from the get-go you sure I, you know you have to talk about obviously off being on the offensive side I and mean, you know coach Shoup and Trey Hart and then coach Sherman again with Greg Phillips those those two wide outs have had a lot of production you know yeah. and you'll, you'll hear coach Shoup talk about all the time you know there's a lot to be said with production yeah you know those guys got big numbers have made big plays in high school um, catching the football to them is not a big deal, you know, and I don't think this stage will be that big of a deal to them. When do they show up? When do they make their impact? I don't know, but I know both of them have had a lot of production and run well enough and, and have got a, a little bit of uh, swagger to them to be able to play at this level. So you're, you're, I think, you know, excited about those two guys at wide out and then being a little selfish knowing, you know, Cole Herdman, I think is a blocked up kid that everybody, when you see him in person, you'll be a little bit surprised at how he looks. He's chiseled up with a nice jawline, yeah. weighs 230 pounds already, um, handles himself like a like a man already, and wants to be really good. You know, wants to be great, and also works that way. So I think that there's another sleeper type guy that we want to get in our room, my room, selfishly, and figure out what he's all about. You know, the video of him is pretty uh, pretty amazing because he looks like he's playing in the in some Greek uh, theater because he got they got the <laughs> pillars in the background and uh, uh, he comes obviously from uh, it's from, from Virginia but mm -hmm. a guy that that uh, you know you're gonna need you're gonna need help in every position as, as any program does but tight end young tight ends is, is going to be an important thing of course Matt Burke's injury last year yeah. too you're going to we're not sure how fast uh, he'll come back but you're going to have to start to develop guys from the, from the get-go no question we got when I mean, we got to develop him right now so he'll, he'll be a big piece of it to get him here and teach him what we do on offense and see where he is in August um, when he gets here right through the summer and then obviously you have to talk about the linemen as well yeah. you know I mean we we fixed a big need there. We'll continue to and get those guys. The guys are here. You know, the thing I think too is, is you, you fail sometimes and, and forget to talk about the guys that are here. We got a lot of guys on campus right now that are working their tails off, you know, and um, being there, volunteering their time, doing extra work. And if we can add four more linemen to that to, to hopefully keep on pushing to get bigger, it's going to help us. Yeah. Obviously, you, you have an incumbent at quarterback going into the spring coming out of last season. That doesn't seem like it'll phase David Blau. Um, I don't know the way he's wired. Yeah, not by no means, and that's what you want. Yeah. You know, I think, I think Danny Etling would celebrate that. 
you know, just as he came in last year with the same wiring, you know. And I think David Blau's the same guy. You hope to do that because that does nothing to make us better. But, um, you know, you could see the maturity of him rise. I think you all could see that. I, I think it was a surprise for me to see Danny in his interviews at the end of the season compared to the beginning, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. to see him. He, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, you know? and and after in each game that he came out of, uh, he'd been in the football game, and being able to being able to do that, uh, I think, was impressive. And that's the kind of guys you, you, it seems to me that are they're going to help you turn this program around sooner rather than later. What uh, you know, you look back at uh, some of the other guys in the class that you you talk about. Uh, uh, one of the ones that got some talk early, Derek Knox, uh, in a, in a Dexter. A running, Dexter Knox, not, there is a Derek Knox, but <laughs> Dexter Knox, excuse me, and, and a guy that uh, that uh, at a position at every, any football team, but a difference maker maybe at a running back from the get-go. No question. He is, um, you know, one of the diamond in the roughs, no question. You get, you get kids that pop up and, and come onto the scene because they play great in big games. Another guy that, that had, you know, we've heard the number, he had five touchdowns in the state mm-hmm. championship game. Um, you know, he is explosive, and all those things on film you see, your eyes, match what you believe about him. The kid's a competitor. Um, he's bright-eyed when he talks to you. He shakes, he shakes your hand firm, and it wants to be great. And I think, you know, there's no question. We, we want to see things out of him. and It's anxious to get him on campus and uh, see what he's about. And then another guy that showed, you know, he didn't – the thing you didn't see about Dexter or DJ, DJ is, yeah, see, you know, well. DJ shows up on special teams on his highlight. That's stuff that didn't show. He runs down and covers kicks, and he shows up at the football. I mean, that kid mm-hmm. likes to be – in the game and make plays, and that that's the thing that impressed you even more as you kept on watching his highlight about that guy. Yeah, that's a big part of this. We talked, I think, in between uh, segments about the fact that, uh, yes, you expect, you expect as many of these guys to be – Starters at some point in time, but you need special teams help. You need you need more depth in that situation, and you see a uh, several guys in this class that can certainly contribute. If they don't make the field as starters, they're going to have a chance at other places. No question. I mean that that's the whole. I mean those two backers and a guy like DJ Cole Herdman, Tim Case, and those guys, the back end guys we sign. All those guys have the ability to get out there and go run and cover and do things in the special teams game that are going to you know obviously help our depth and allow our guys to to be more fresh on offense, defense, all those things. And that's the exciting thing about the class, you know. Have you ever seen a human being as large as Corey Clements? Not in my time on this earth. Yeah. Um, I never, I've never, I've seen guys taller, but not a bigger man, you know, with, with his weight and what he carries and his height. I've never seen a, a guy that big. And obviously it's been much ballyhooed, you know, the need to, lack of experience at tackle and obviously the need for the offensive line to if you're going to make a big move in, in year two that's going to be an area that's going to do that but talk about that that size and being able to what do you do when you get a guy here that's played at a certain level but play and and what do, what do you have to do what does coach Jim Bridge have to do to coach him up to get him ready to go what, do, what I mean is it as simple and, and the fact that he won't be here in the spring sure. obviously he's going to be here in, in the summer to be able to start things up well, that's the key is, is how quickly can you get them here in the summer, um, which we'll get them here as quickly as we're allowed. Um, you know, Coach Bridge does a heck of a job with our line up front. He'll, you know, the, the biggest, there's, there's two big issues. One is the, the, the X and O size, teaching him the playbook and, and make sure he's ready to go, which we'll do a great job with and, and Coach Bridge will. But then the other side is, is the, the strength and conditioning side to get his tail in shape as well as all of them to get there and be physically be able to play in this league in September, you know, so there's there's two phases, and how quick can you get them there is the whole the whole key. Yeah, that's going to be a, be, be a challenge, I'm sure. Brian, reloading the secondary uh, seemed like a uh, pretty big need. You feel like you got that done? We did. With I guys mean, you like? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I think that um, you know, obviously, I know <coughs> Coach Hudson's happy. You know, mm-hmm. Coach Hazen's happy about it. And anytime you can add depth to the back end and give those guys, because the biggest thing that hurt hurt us last year on that side of the ball, you hear, I mean, it was injury. You yeah. know. When Feichter and those guys went down, we, you know, we, there was a lot, there was no depth. Yeah. I think, right. if anything, you've added some depth picking up Cedric Dale and Tim Casey and those guys that can allow you to be able to fill in some voids and special team players to be able to be over there and be more athletic. Uh, another question on just on being able to identify and, and other other cues that you look for for being the right fit. And we've talked about the coach. We've made I don't know we really hit on the parents, but what what are some of the the, the litmus tests or the things that you really want to look for that you can tell at a quick glance that maybe somebody can be a good fit for what you're looking to do. Yeah, I think I mean, are you more talking about film. Yeah, film, but but also then also when you get a chance to meet them too, what what do you look for? Sure, I think more than anything, 
you know, as crazy as it sounds, I mean, you're, you're really looking for guys. I mean, how, is their head down when they talk to you? Are they confident guys? Can they handle themselves around other guys? And how the biggest thing for us, I think, is, is getting them here on official visit and, and getting feedback from our players, you know. Yeah. Hey, how was that? How was he last night? What kind of guy is he, you know? And, and more than any, more times than not, I mean, not we we brought in a lot of good guys that interacted well with our guys when they got to be around our players. That's a testament to our guys and what we got in here. So, I th but I think that's huge. You, you know how it is. You don't want the guy that comes into the room. We've all been around him, no matter if it's in friends in college or yeah. whatever it is. And you just know that guy does not fit in with us. Yeah. You know, and you, you're hoping <laughs> been that there? yeah. I mean, we have. We all I have. was that guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can believe that. Idea. Yeah. Um, so it's. You know, I think we got a lot of guys that fit in with what we're about here and, and, and knew what we were about. I think we did a good job. The guys on the staff did a great job of selling what Purdue was. It's not a – we didn't have to change gears. We're not going to change who we are after or before recruiting, you know. As you went through your first season at Purdue as a coaching staff, uh, as you acclimated your personnel, kind of tweaked some things as you went, did that change how you perceived recruits? Like, for example, if you're going on defense from more of a 4-3 to a little bit of a different look, do you all of a sudden start to look at the guys you have committed and the guys you're recruiting saying, if we want to do this, how does this kid fit in? Absolutely. I think, I mean, I think that definitely, when you're watching film, you know how it is when you watch a kid, you say, and all of them do it, and Coach Hazel does a great job. He compares to all those years of coaching. Mm -hmm. He'll throw out a kid's name that I don't even know to say mm -hmm. that's that's who he was, that's who he was for us there, you know? And, and I think guys are doing the same thing. Okay, here's what we're doing now. He fits that, you know, you're, you're constantly trying to make your eyes fit to what they are because if it doesn't fit, some guy, I mean, you watch so many great players, but some guys just, for whatever it is, because of scheme or whatever it is, they just don't fit, you know? And um, so you're constantly finding ways to, does he fit what we do or what we're going to do, you know? Yeah, and you look at that, and that's a, that is a, uh, an essential part of all this. Kirk Barron, uh, certainly, when you have a chance to, and it's my first time in front of him was uh, was on Wednesday afternoon, but he leaves you with an impression of a uh, not only just he's a character just with his hair and everything else, but he is a guy that uh, um, uh, seems pretty intent on being that uh, he used the term nasty streak for offensive linemen, an important thing that uh, and I like the fact of what he also said uh, certainly about learning from uh, learning from his uh, uh, who was already there, the guys that are already there and trying to be able to make that work. Talk about him a little bit. Yeah, you know, Kurt one, he's got a phenomenal family, which that's yeah. the fun part of recruiting. You get yeah. to go up and meet those people, get them here on official visits. What a great family he has. And, and Kirk's one of those guys that doesn't say a whole lot, which is good, but he can still, he's still good in front of the camera, good out when he has to interview. He sells the program great. But at the same time, I think Kirk's one of those guys that's going to put on the helmet and not talk about it a whole lot and just go get nasty and play the game. That's what he was in camp. Yeah. I mean, in camp, he is physical, physical. And – I don't think Kirk likes to talk a whole lot about it that much besides he wants to be about it, and that's the exciting thing about him. And he's not, again, he's not too big above himself to not be ready to learn. I think he knows what a Robert Kugler brings to the table and how smart he is. He wants to learn from him and be, be whatever we can be here and be whatever he can be here to help us win games. And that's why you're excited about a guy like him being here, you know? Yeah. Cooler name, having a, f having a physical running back named Knox or having an offensive tackle named Beirut Yacoubi. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be Yacoubi. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, that trumps all, but long arms. And, a, and again, yeah. another guy with a great family structure that uh, wanted to be here and I think is going to be a huge – Coach Bridge thinks he's going to be a big guy, you know, with long arms and half reach and got great feet. So, gosh, he, you know, he's another, another exciting young player to come in here and, and be around a guy like Kirk Barron, you know. Tackle for him, or I mean, because of that size at six five, I mean, you're gonna maybe put a little more weight on him, but, uh, which you probably can say that for just about everybody. But sure. uh, do you project him out there? Yeah, I think they do. You know, I think Coach Bridge really believes with his length and, like I said, long arms. I think that he does project him to to get out there and be able to keep guys off of our uh, QB. And I'm excited to have him. Yeah. How about the defensive linemen, Will and Kiwan Jones? Kiwan, yeah. I haven't hit on them yet. Yeah, haven't hit them yet. You know, Will. Another just blue collar guy that was excited to get here. Coach Hudson did a great job with him and um, great family structure. Another leader type guy that wants to come in and continue. He's already pushed himself to gain weight and get college ready and is a guy that will come in here and work his tail off to be good. And then Kiwan is the flashier of the two that's been very vocal on social media. Yeah. And uh, confidence is not lacking with Kiwan. And, but is a guy that shows up in a hurry to the football and runs around and, and is a little bit of a showman, and you need that. You know, he's got a little bit of juice to him, and, and we're excited about him. And then you got 
obviously right down around that area is Juan Jenkins, yeah. who is another guy that no matter when you flipped his film on, on the defensive <laughs> side of the ball, Juan Jenkins was showing up at the football and knows how to tackle and does it well. And another Florida guy that, that comes up here. So we're excited, you know, to, to get him here. I know the, the defensive staff is excited about them both. Since you mentioned social media, how much do you try or how much do you hope that that can act as a medium to kind of spread enthusiasm about your program? Because, you know, stuff takes off like wildfire nowadays oh, if you've got momentum. Sure. And we have to. It's, it is the way of the world. So whether we like it or not, it is there, and we got to make sure that we're – up to date and we got to continue to push to be up to date because kids are getting information from there and like you said the retweet and the posting of pictures and all those things are happening at the snap of a finger and we've got to be there we've got to have it all out there to market and sell and everybody needs to see that fast p you know yeah, yeah do you, go ahead when you have a kid like kirk commit do you encourage him to you know use social media to spread the word Obviously, he was very enthusiastic. He might have done that on his own. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he. Do, I mean, there's a lot. These kids now, they take off on their Once they commit, yeah. they know that they're part of building this program and building recruiting classes in the future, all those things, and selling the program on their own. And, man, he took it and ran with it. Langston Newton, we still don't know the, the, uh, unless something's happened here in the last couple of days in terms of what his, what, his, what his process is for next year. But he's a guy also an impressive size. And the state of Indiana guy. Talk a little bit about uh, yeah. Can bring. I know Coach Hazel was so excited, and the staff so excited to get a guy here that's you know from our footprint, from the state of Purdue, and from a great program down in Indianapolis. So we're excited to get him here, and I'm excited to see him. You know, get eyes on him and see him as everybody is. Obviously, the defensive guys, but it gives us depth from a mature guy um, that's that's been at the college level already, and to get him here and get him here in the spring is great. But we also got to. Hopefully we get good news. Yeah, we get know. that. Just cause the question, and if you don't know, is whether he'll be eligible to play next year uh, with the Boilermakers. And uh, uh, he certainly is an impressive looking. And again, one of the three that was up at the press conference on Wednesday. Brian, we have about time for about one more question. Yeah, I think um, obviously you can't talk about specific 2015 recruits, but I think it's publicly known. I think you've offered like 11 guys from Indiana now. Um, is that you guys trying to kind of – make a statement about what you're what you're trying to do from here on out absolutely we're um coach has said from the start we want half or more than half of our class each year to come from the state of purdue mm -hmm. and especially the you know local areas that we have so it's not a you know it's not a gimmick every offer we put out there are kids we believe that are good enough to play here at purdue you know we believe that there's that many good players in this state we've got to get on them and get them here you know that's the that's the push you got to be able to recruit your area that's closest to you for two reasons one you know, it creates fan base and creates yeah. uh, major support from your high school coaches. And two, you always like when a kid can get in his car and drive here. You know, and we believe that's important to get guys here that can drive here and have grown up knowing what Purdue football is and the tradition of it. So it's it's not a very good deal for us not to be good in this area. So we recognize that Coach Hazel does too. And the state of Purdue is Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. That's it. That's it. It's going to be a new territory that's going to be the 51st state. Or no, actually, it would, it would bring us back down like 48. Yeah, take care. How, ma how, how many electoral votes? I don't know. <laughs> Could be, it'll be a swing state, I can promise yeah, you, with Ohio, there. Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And we're, just, we're not talking politics. Right? <laughs> so, Coach, thank you so much for your time. We really enjoyed it, and there's a lot of interesting information. If you missed part of this, this will also replay tonight around uh, <coughs> dinner time. Uh, we'll have this up there as well. Uh, if in, they missed it, they're not hearing you say this. Well, <laughs> I'm saying if they missed the front end of it. Okay. okay, so okay. thanks for the clarification there. So uh, I know you're you're here all the time for us, Brian. That's what I like. Uh, here to turn the screws. Yep, yeah, no question. And we'll look forward to uh, talking more football here in the next few, next few weeks too. Uh, hope if we can get Coach Daryl Hazel on here, we'll see how that goes. He's got a busy schedule this month. We'd like to do that. To always get him as we head into spring balls. Hard March the sixth. March sixth. It's less yeah. than a month away. And uh, yeah. that is hard to believe. And one good it's thing about snowing. that is it might be warmer here. By it might not be so snowing snow. the ground. Better. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to make it to make it before that. So we'll take a two-minute break. Come back with Gary Donna, who's your basketball magazine. We'll talk a little hoops, and uh, let Brian head off to his basketball game tonight. Uh, uh, heading out to see Vince Edwards in Hamilton, Ohio, right? Cool. And then prior to the Purdue Ohio State tomorrow night, six o'clock, uh, in uh, in Columbus. So guys, uh, thanks again. We'll look forward to taking a two-minute break and come back with Gary Donna.